So gents, if you were to walk into a shop and you had to buy one of these, or you were looking to buy one of these perfumes, which one would you feel more comfortable picking up and buying? Welcome back to Talking Sense. I'm Ben. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different and um, I wanted to kind of talk about gender in perfumery and especially like modern perfumery. Um, like where's it going? Where's it been? What's it all about? What's the point? So for decades now, we've had the concept of woods for a boy, flowers for a girl. But this is really in spite of history. Strong Bushido warriors of Japan, uh, you know, men that most people and most kind of men would probably like to assume were manly men fighting on the battlefield with their kind of Bushido ways. These Bushido warriors wore perfumes and even rouge on their cheeks um, in order to look healthy. In the West, perfume wasn't gendered as such, it just represented status. So we had kings and the monarchy and the lords and ladies would all flounce about with frilly collars smelling of roses and lavender and if you were a guy, you were still considered perfectly masculine. Tally ho, my fine, saucy young trollop! You're not here! Trip along here with all your cash and some naughty night attire, and you'll be staring at my bedroom ceiling from now till Christmas, you lucky tart! <laughs> Yours with the deepest respect, etc. Signed, George. P.S. Woof, woof! Well, what do you think? But now, we move forward to today. And studies have shown that gender is one of the main descriptors we use for scent. And the mainstream still puts out the majority of their scents as masculine or feminine. When you go into any department store, you're going to be greeted by a male and a female section. And unisex scent releases only make up about 18% of all releases per year. If we look at old perfumes like Penhaligon's Hammond Bouquet, which was released in 1872, and Guerlain's Jicky. Um, Haman Bouquet is Lavender, Bergamot and Rose, which is, you know, a classical kind of sheep bro. Um, Guerlain's Jicky is Wood, Leather, Bergamot and Lavender, which again is another kind of classical sheep bro. Yet one of those is geared towards women and one of them is geared towards men. Yet if you were to look at them on the page, which one's which, you probably wouldn't guess, right? In fact, you might guess that Jicky was based towards men because of the leather and the wood. And Hermann Bouquet is towards the women because it's mainly leather and bergamot and rose. But it's the other way around, right? So somewhere along the line, perfume houses got the idea to market specifically to gender and differentiate scents based on gender. And they essentially have just run with it. Chanel number no. 5 in 1921 has probably got a lot to answer for. But if we zoom forward to the 70s with Opium in 1977 and Kuros in 1981, these two perfumes told a pretty popular story for at least a decade. And then finally came CK1 in 1994, which was a truly androgynous scent. And that kind of opened the gates for more androgyny in scents and true unisex scents. And then if we look forward a little bit more, and, and things start getting quite interesting at this point, we look at something like Paco Rabanne 1 million, which I hate to admit it because I hate it as a scent. But that, again, was another kind of quiet revolution. And if you look at it, men's scents didn't really smell very manly anymore. It set a trend for men's scents that didn't at all smell manly. So if you look at some of these, you know, what I believe Paco Rabanne really paved the way for were things like 
um, Lomidiel by Guerlain and Valentino Womo, for example. Um, you know, these scents don't smell anything like Paco Rabanne, but what they have in common is a scent that if you were to, in all honesty, blindfold someone, hold this under their nose and say, give that a smell, what do you think, male or female? They would probably guess feminine. But this is a scent called L'Omidial, you know, the ideal man. It's marketed towards men. As much as it, you know, smells like a female scent, it's got strong, sharp corners, you know, big square bottle like for man. And it's got like this kind of uh, yeah, military kind of cap on it or whatever, you know, just, just in case you need reminding that this is a scent for a man, uh, you know, um, but it doesn't at all smell like that. It smells like a scent for a woman. And I think Paco Ban 1 million, when that came out, was a kind of quiet sort of start to, to a shift in perfumery that has led us to where we are roughly today, where with the Indian niche market, in a lot of respects, um, has really capitalised on this. But we look at the Indian niche market, so something like... Um, Shaggy by Serge Luton. Um Now this is a pretty androgynous scent. And if you look at the bottle, um, you know, it's pretty androgynous. It doesn't really say anything. There's nothing really on this that, that is telling you one way or the other, right? It's just a uh, perfume. Um, there's nothing sort of telling either way. And yet, we look at two of their other scents from Serge Dom, which is um, Better Oriental and Umbois Vanille. Now, this one, I would say, is leans fairly feminine, and this one is Vetiver. So, you know, you would say leans fairly masculine, traditionally, I'm talking. But by using these bottles, you know, in a sense, Serge Dom is, is essentially saying, you decide, you know, we're just presenting this to you. Now you buy them if you like them, you know. They're all marketed as unisex. Knock yourself out. Another example is things like Lattes and Parfumer, who, you know, most sort of niches and in indies are the same. These are just ones that I've picked up. Their bottles are, are more or less androgynous. They're just bottles. You know, they, they don't they don't sort of give away what's inside so much. But what I find interesting there is 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 it is this a sign that India and Nisha are kind of more like woke, if you like, or, or kind of pushing boundaries? Or is it from um, a practical standpoint? You know, because for them, their market is small as, as it is. Why cut it in half by presenting something as feminine when or, or masculine? Um, you know, and you're instantly halving your market. Because I, I don't know figures for sure but I, I probably would guess that most niches release more than 18% unisex cents per year which is the mainstream the mainstream releases 18% of their cents per year a unisex releases I think um, you know niches and in indies would be a lot higher like a lot lot higher the other thing with kind of India niche perfumers is, is that they don't really have the budgets of like the mainstream right so to um, advertise so they leave it up to word of mouth and things like social media these days and stuff like that to spread the word but by doing so they're essentially um, democratizing the, the the choice you know they're, they're leaving it up to the the consumer and democratizing gender in perfume they're leaving it entirely basically up to you to decide and you know, it doesn't seem to damage their their the, the bottom line for them. They seem to be doing quite well. In fact, I would say it's a market that is thriving. You know, it's it's modern perfumery. You know, it's doing incredibly well. But the mainstream still thrives on things like the Sauvage advert with Johnny Depp in the desert, or if we look at like Hermes, you've got a designer there that probably considered itself relatively kind of hawk couture 
And yet they're advertising from Ter de Mez, you've got a man riding a horse in a desert. And for Twilly, you've got sexy girls dancing in the street. We're back again to men's fragrances being men. I'm fragrance for men. And women fragrances being, uh, you know, sexy and attractive, um, flirtatious or whatever. So the mainstream is really kind of tied to these outdated principles, outdated paradigms. But it's difficult. Like even in my own reviews, you know, I talk about perfume and I talk about it on a spectrum. And I'll say, you know, that this thing leans feminine or, or this one, you know, skews masculine. Uh, like like I said earlier, like it's still one of the main descriptors in perfumery is if it's, you know, the gender, if it's male for masculine or, or, or feminine audiences um, and, and even I do that despite the fact that I don't conform to these things you know I routinely wear fragrances like Vivian Westwood Boudoir or Zoologist Hummingbird you know these are by anyone's kind of uh, estimation that they would say that these are sense that to use our terminology for today, skew feminine. I would say these are scents that are traditionally feminine scents. This is a fruity floral. This is a uh, floral shepra. You know, like they're 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 very much um, like traditionally what we would call feminine scents. So you know, and I, but but I wear them all the time. Don't care. Don't give a monkeys. So you know, I'm gender bend often enough, and yet I still struggle to not use terminology like gendered terminology to describe perfumes when I do reviews and stuff despite the fact that you know I do think that our language is slowly changing when we talk about them we used to talk about perfumes for girls and colognes and aftershaves for men and I find now you know people generally tend to talk fragrances and scents and fragrances and scents doesn't seem to have that traditional gender specific kind of vibe to it so we can get away with saying fragrances or scents and it's a blanket term whereas if i feel you say perfume it automatically has a kind of feminine leaning um association and if you say obviously cologne and aftershave it's got a kind of masculine association so we are slowly changing our terminology to fit these kind of non-binary times um but i think it's difficult um when we use you know we have these uh gender specific roles so ingrained into us from decades as we've just seen so when it comes to gender bending you know women again seem uh much more open to gender bending to me um i think it's been something that has happened for a long time um especially in fashion if you look at women's fashion, you know, how often is um, it subverting gender by using sort of tradi traditional men's items? Uh, you know, like the, a kind of classic example is the kind of Mac, you know, the oversized Mac. Uh, that That's something that's been subverted for decades now, and it's still a fashionable thing. Um, but in men's fashion, it's much rarer. And usually, really, if you think about it, only seen in the avant garde side of things. And I think it's kind of similar to perfume, you know, it seems like men are not so willing to wear feminine, traditionally feminine perfumes. Whereas women are seemingly much more open to the idea of wearing a, a men's or you know a traditional men's perfume if you look at Sergio Tom Vetiver Oriental for example I spoke to someone on my channel just a couple of days ago who just bought this things like Umbois Vanille again is uh, a, I would say um, a traditionally kind of it's what well, is kind of interesting scent actually this one it's traditionally I would say feminine but it mixes some quite masculine notes in there, a bit like Vetiver Oriental, which, you know, both of these are quite subversive in that they're, they're kind of, I wouldn't say gender neutral, I would say they both flirt with masculine and feminine. It's more like they're gender fluid, which is sort of a, a slightly different 
thing i think in perfume but so yeah what what do you think do you do you do you tend to mind gender bending um do 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 you do you stick to je- traditional perfumes which are traditionally for male or traditionally for female to 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 match your gender um and i would ask you if you do do you think the perfumes you're wearing are particularly masculine or particularly feminine because especially for masculine perfumes you look at things like valentino womo um l'omidial uh i don't have it here right here but i mean i could run through my shelf you know parfum de molly layton silver mountain water 40 knots surge off like these are just the first ones that i can see on my shelf do you think that they're particularly masculine fragrances because i'm telling you now i don't think they are i think if you blindfolded people and shoved it under their nose i think all of those fragrances which i just mentioned would come back with a very confused face people saying oh i don't know like masculine oh feminine you know because both of them are fairly gender fluid and have elements from both so you know if you do stick to gender norms i would sort of respectfully ask you like why do do you unless you're someone that sticks to very much the extremes like someone who would only wear things like hummingbird and boudoir if you're a girl or would only wear things like um kuros or or you know those sorts of fragrances if you're a guy nothing wrong with that you know that's it's all just taste right so it's not you know it's it's fine but if you just stick to those i can understand it more Whereas if you're someone that says, you know, I, I tend to stick within my gender, but, you know, owns things like Valentino Womo, I would really sort of question you then and say, what makes you think this is more masculine than uh, Naughty Alice by Vivian Westwood? <laughs> because I would say it's not. So what do you think in mod- of modern perfumery and gender? Do you think it's outdated? Do you think... Um, you know, it needs to be kind of scrapped? Or do you actually quite like gender in perfumery? Do you think it should always stick around in some capacity? You know, would you be sad if all of perfume became a kind of gender neutral um, packaging and things like that, you know, or and, and even gender neutral kind of smells? Um, would you be upset by that? Or would you think that's a step forward? Um, you know, do you gender bend? Do you, do you wear masculines if you're a fe- female, and 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 do you wear fem- feminines if you're a male? Um, you know, check it all in the comments. Let me know your thoughts, basically. And to sort of to further that as well, like ladies, if if you had a boyfriend that wore hummingbird or a partner that wore hummingbird, and 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 for the gents, you know, if you had a partner that wore things like Ted Hermes or Encre Noir or something, would you feel um comfortable with that would you feel that's fine and you know and where do we see it going you know in a in a culture now that's more or less non-binary um in terms of gender where do, where do we see it going do we see that you know the, the the mainstream finally being conquered um and dropping their nonsense man in desert rides horse adverts or not uh Personally, I think probably not. So yeah, that's that's that. It was a bit different today, a bit of a different video. I just wanted to talk about this. I wanted to kind of open it up for a kind of discussion, really. Um, and, you know, just make a video on that. So yeah, it's Talking Sense. I'm Ben. Subscribe if you want. Um, definitely comment. I would be interested to know your thoughts. Cheers.